everyone welcome to this special episode on world environment day this is an episode called earth talks and we have very special guests with us today uh we thought that the world is in the midst of a pandemic there's so much that's going wrong with the world right now whether it's a financial crisis a health crisis uh, there's unemployment there's cyclones that have hit our country so in the midst of all these stories of doom and gloom i thought this world environment day let's reflect on stories of hope and courage so i am proud to introduce our panel for today three individuals with three remarkable stories shailendra singh from the turtle survival alliance purnima burman from aranyak and subrajyoti chatterjee who volunteers for several wildlife ngos in kolkata so i'm going to start shailendra with your story first i know you work in uttar pradesh with several endangered species be it the dolphin or the turtles uh, in the chambal river Uh, several rivers i should say so uh, you had in fact reached out to me a few days ago and shared a very delightful story and uh, to me what is commendable about this story is that this is all happening in the mix, midst of a lockdown and containment zones and social distancing so take us through what happened and what you were able to do uh thanks bahar so actually uh, we have been involved with the rescuing gangetic river dolphin from different canals of uttar pradesh since 2013 and generally what happened that means you no know, post monsoon we always get uh, information from forest departments and locals that means you know uh, they generally see one gangetic dolphin somewhere they report to us and then we go and uh, we try and rescue that particular animal but in this case so since to 2013 i mean i i think that means you no know, so total in 23 operations we saved 17 gangetic dolphins but in this particular operation i mean like you know uh, since as you said that pandemics was there and things means you know the petroling was like little low and stuff and then on 17th of may we uh, suddenly heard that four gangetic dolphins are kind of stranded in a canal in barabanki district of uttar pradesh and that was like means you no know, entire team was like means you no know, little curious that means you no know, how four animals just like came together but like we we thought that probably since water is receding and you know so probably for last two months there was less petroling and stuff and uh, uh, that's why i mean you no know, they they just like kind of aggregated to one place very close to a siphon in barabanki district so immediately we just like you know started making plans that means you know how we can go and save those animals and the entire team was like little nervous since means you know we did like maximum two rescue at a time and when i say at a time that means you know two to three days and they are like very sensitive species as you know and uh, i mean like you know they can die like anything you will try and just try and capture them and try and transport them and things like that so we immediately made plans that means for what can be done and we got the locations and everything and then we applied for a permission and things since they are said to one animal so you need to have a special permission to catch those animals so how many people were involved shall indra in this rescue effort and uh, what ensued so uh, there are three three kind of like means no people were involved but three groups were involved one is like means no so we have a small team we work with the fishermen from ghagra river so we have a project site there so we train them to rescue gangetic dolphin as well as crocodiles as well so whenever there is like situation in the state uh, so we try and use those fishermen and they are very good they understand the importance of uh, every single animal and then try they try and give their best another group was like forest department officers those were providing all the logistics and the supervision and the crowd control and things like that and then we have our team so we i have like a couple of brave girls working in my team three four people and they were like means you no know, always they are up to you know take up such operations so, so they were like arrived at the site what happened tell us that yes so uh, on 22nd we started this operation so we went there we just tried to do a reiki of that particular area and we just like went up and down and then means you no know, observed we were there for like a couple of hours and then we saw that means you no know, three animals were clearly in that area so i mean the key was that means you know how once we start putting the net in the water that means that means you are trying to focus on one animal that means you are stressing other two animals 
and so that means you know, we'll have to uh, we thought that means you know, probably we'll have to make a very very good and uh, good planning and strategy that means you know, and then plus the temperature was uh, day temperature was like 40 plus which was not definitely good for like you know taking the animals from such side to uh, to the release side so what we did we just like you know divided the entire team up about like i would say 26 to 28 people into three units so that means that means you know, and then we uh, so we have like one set of rescue equipments with us in the office but we had to multiply into three so we know that okay means you know, now what we will do so we started means you know, so 23rd we started camping at the location 22nd was the uh, essentially everything all the planning and then so how we are going to do that but 23rd means you know, we started camping at the location so we uh, documented that how animals were moving in that area in the particular stretch of the canal and what they were doing and things and then 24th very early morning when i say very early that was 3 30 or 4 o'clock in the morning so we started the operation and then one animal which was a male was a really i mean uh, five five point five feet a handsome male with long lots of teeth and stuff i send you a photo of that that guy he was like kind of a little secluded from that area he was not with the females and that particular uh, other other two females those are in another area so we thought that probably we are going to target that animal first so team a moved at 3 30 4 o'clock in the morning when it was already i mean it was dark and then we started just like putting the nets in the water and we picked that animal means no be like in one hour's effort so, uh, and I was in the water, other people and the main divers, everyone was in the water and we just like, so one team started taking the animal back to the release site. The release site was like about two, two, two and a half uh, hours from the, where we captured all those animals. Okay. So it okay. was like major challenge to take those animals, means, you know, to that particular location to release them. So we took like, means, you know, the uh, route, which was sorted and things. And then second animal, we just like, you know, so, in like I would say that by like 10 o'clock means you no know, we captured all three animals from that particular area or particular stretch of the river but the the entire means you no know, twist was there when we just like finished this operation then we found out there's another animal I mean like you know which was surfacing there in that particular that's another male which was somehow we missed or that did not surface in that night or yeah. probably like means you know, till four o'clock or something so, but we did not do anything right away. And then you know, we were still focusing on these three animals and three teams moved with these animals to the river. And we were very, very successful and releasing them back in the river. And then we moved back. And by the time it was 11 o'clock and we, and then temperature was again, you know, again, temperature was not very good. But since we put the net, so we had to complete that operation that particular day. So yeah. 11 o'clock we yeah. came back and we put the net again. And then you know, we, but that animal luckily, and that animal was like, like little stressed when we were trying to transport that. So when I say stressed, I mean they either they just like breathe very fast or they stop breathing. So means you know, when they stop breathing, so that means like means you no, know, so that they might sing. So but we had like we have ambu bags and things to supply oxygen and stuff, and we were very successful putting that back animal means you know, in the in the in the river. Okay, so, so Shalinda, what, what you're saying to me, yes. yeah, what you're saying to me is uh, you had a team of 28 people and uh, a rescue operation which, uh, uh, you know, spread over 48 hours and, you know, we watch on TV these documentaries and we think it's so simple. We take our nets, we go there and we just rescue them and bring them back. But you did all this in the midst of a pandemic and I don't know if you were maintaining social distancing norms or not, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out more about that later. Let me now get in Purnima Burman. Uh, Purnima is really, uh, everybody knows her story, but just, uh, you know, for the formality of introduction, she works with a lovely, lovely bird species, uh, the greater adjutant stork in Northeast India. And uh, uh, she's mobilized an entire community of women, uh, I would say men and women in the village to protect these birds. And Purnima, you've been keeping yourself busy during the pandemic as well. Uh, you've been, uh, can you show us those lovely masks? Uh, so the women from the community uh, weave these uh, lovely Mekla uh, uh, which are which everybody knows uh, really is the, the, the hallmark dress for women uh, in Assam. So she decided to innovate a bit and the, the mask that we are all wearing these days, uh, they, it now has the motif of the adjutant stork. Uh, Purnima, can you share, show that to us and perhaps share some of your stories? Because I know you've been doing rescue work as well these past few weeks. 
Yeah, sure. Uh, first, Namaskar to everyone, and thank you so much, Bahar, and for this um, for this honor and opportunity. And yeah, in pandemic time, we are very busy. And yeah, you can uh, see our mask, uh, face mask. Here you can see all of you. Uh, can you lift that a bit, Purnima? Just to lift in, yeah. Uh, and and can you perhaps wear it? Oh, lovely. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this one. <laughs> okay. So I, that's lovely. I mean, I I wish we could uh, order yeah. from you. <laughs> and Subrajati, right? Okay, I I'm not the same. Uh, there are uh, some another ones also like all right. So Mrs. Embodied Hargila. Yeah. It's very lovely and. Um, okay. Our women uh, produce more than 10,000, uh, yeah, yeah 10,000, 500 masks they produce and distributed in the community and they, they really they really got a good income generation. Actually, we had Bihu before the lockdown, all the women were very busy, you know about our Rongali Bihu uh, and this is the time actually they uh, they all were preparing to sell them in a very, in a big um, festival uh, on, in, a, in, yeah, in, yeah, in, a, in some proper place. And then uh, we all were preparing and I was supporting them. Then suddenly this lockdown happened. Then uh, we had so many gamosas and all. So, so then uh, everyone was really very sad. Then I asked not to worry and we'll come up with some different solution. And then this came out. <laughs> yeah. So that's a lovely story. Sometimes conservationists don't just have to rescue animals. They have to innovate also. Uh, you know, when you work with communities, here was a community which was weaving the traditional motif. Uh, with the adjutant stock on it, and uh, Purnima, you decided to be creative and turn those into into masks. So that's a lovely story. But you also shared with me uh, these pictures of these birds, the adjutant stock. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, in uh, at this uh, we have uh, just after lockdown, since the lockdown started, we have rescued. Uh, uh, 10 uh, Hargila birds and out of those we could save uh, six uh, birds but the uh, last weeks the, uh, these were two different birds these were the last uh, two you know they, they were the late breeders actually actually last month with all the birds baby birds the, all the fledglings flew away but yeah. last month actually uh, uh, so yeah so we were almost we were actually our tension was over but these two birds were still there they were they were three months uh, two baby birds three months and they they were the late breeders actually and we were really observing them how when they will go and two months they would uh, actually it was really we were really worried that yeah sometimes it happens keep happening and uh, um, but suddenly on 26 May there was a huge storm in Assam, and then um, uh, lots of trees actually roosting trees and nesting trees uh, fell down, and uh, one huge nesting tree uh, which we call as Dewa, which fell down, up, uh, you know, just crashed and down, and it also damaged some property of a of a family. And the, uh, it was a big, you know, dispute. Like there was a big family fight also among three households. You can understand. And it was a really very painful situation for me and to manage everything. And uh, you know, it 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 damaged the cow set, toilet, and a, a part of the house of a family. And the the, the tree owner was different, but uh, it damaged the other person's house. And then um, then from from on this tree, uh, do two birds were there, two baby birds, three months. And they, they, they fell down, and immediately we rescued them and handed over to Assam Seju. And they, they, these are doing very well now. We are very fortunate that you know they are doing well. Then, at the same time, we had to take care of the family. We compensated. Yes. Uh, we didn't have any compensation scheme. Right. Said, but we managed the compensation and uh, like we had to you know renovate their house and 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 also to remove the because because it was a storm it was a very rainy uh, you know day and uh, and people could not go to the you know people could not move so we had to clear we had to remove the tree also with the help of the forest so, yeah. and Just, i also yes, yeah, please. Yeah, please tell me yeah no, I was just going to give a context that for people who don't know the village where you're working, uh, these are birds really uh, that live interspersed with human beings virtually because they, uh, they, uh, they are nesting and roosting on trees that are within the village. So if the tree fell, the nest got destroyed and some, somebody's home and as you had said, their washroom as well had got destroyed. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
Yeah, actually, I, I, another good news, uh, we, we also had artificial platform. Uh, uh, just uh, as you know that this was last year, we were successful. It was It is just an experiment we are doing experimentally only. And uh, last year, we were successful. So this year, we made more artificial platform. And okay. in this lockdown time, these bars, two bars, you know, they, they flew away successfully. This is a very good <laughs> for us. I, okay. uh, yeah. That's a delightful story, Purnima. Thanks for sharing that with us. Last but not the least, Subrajyoti Chatterjee. You're somebody, I know that Shailendra and Purnima, uh, you know, they do this as full-time work, but you're somebody uh, who volunteers his time uh, for doing rescue work. Um, and uh, your city got hit by a cyclone recently. And uh, you were out there, even you were telling me within containment zones, having to take out uh, you know, birds and injured wildlife uh, uh, during the, the cyclone. So uh, tell us the scale of the devastation and how you manage. Like Shalendra was telling, uh, you know, they had to have a team of 28 people. So what were you, your experiences like trying to rescue animals in the mid midst of a pandemic? Yes, Baha, thank you. Thanks. Uh, first of all, thank you uh, for giving me this kind of an opportunity. And uh, thanks to Dr. Singh and uh, Ms. Berman to share screen. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, I work with uh, a few NGOs here in Calcutta. Uh, one is called Public and one is called Heal. So, and also in some of the occasions, we also work with TSA, with Dr. Singh, regarding dolphin uh, things and all. So, yes. Uh, <clears throat> Amidst this uh, pandemic, uh, so you have all heard that um, uh, Amphan has it really hard in the city or in the heart of the city. Uh, so it has almost devastated uh, Sundarban completely. And uh, the speed when it reaches uh, reached Kolkata uh, is around uh, 130 to 135. The gusting speed is like uh, around 160. So... Uh, uh, Owing to the sheer uh, force and um, of the wind and everything, so at least this is um, uh, this is an uh, uh, government estimation. At least fifteen thousand uh, trees have been uprooted, and uh, uh, more uh, uh, like uh, they are being uh, everywhere. You will find in the plat in the uh, footpaths in the roads they are lying helter skelter. And you can well gauge the uh, amount of uh, the uh, roosting trees, the nesting trees gone. So uh, the uh, West Bengal government has already issued the warning regarding this kind of an uh, uh, storm or gale which is coming. So we come up with a, a, a small uh, leaflet uh, where we shared uh, numbers and contact numbers of all our volunteers. So in total, we shared at least like 20, 24 uh, phone numbers and contact details of volunteers from not only from Calcutta, but from all the other districts where uh, we were informed that uh, this, this uh, Amphan is going to hit us. So, uh, so, so it was- could, only could you describe to me, sorry to interrupt you there, but uh, could you describe to me one incident where you were personally involved in a rescue and what you came across? Because we just, you know, think trees get uprooted. We never think that there are creatures actually living in those trees. So if you could share any one story. Yes, yes, I'm coming to that. Sorry. Uh, uh, so, yes, uh, obviously I got uh, this uh, call from uh, area not that far from my place where I, I stay. So uh, this, is, uh, this is near Goria and there is this place. So uh, I, I got the call uh, around... Uh, late in night on 21st of May. So I went there with one of my volunteers. So when I was entering, so I could see a barricade. Uh, so barricade, and uh, it's like an obvious sign that there, there is something wrong. So, but we have to go inside because the bird is laying there. And that's a uh, pelagic bird. Uh, so we are very intrigued that we need to save that bird at any cost. So when we uh, came close to the barricade. Uh, there were a set of policemen, so they interrogated uh, what is your, uh, what is the intention of uh, you for coming here. So I, tried, I started to uh, just um, uh, have a dialogue with them, but they are not being like uh, they will, uh, and they will say that okay, go, go from here. But uh, we insisted on uh, going inside that uh, sorry, in that area. So 
and then uh, we had to call up the forest department uh, one of the dfo he is very close to me so we have to call up the uh, dfo the divisional forest officer and then he interfered intervened and then only we were able to and uh, get inside that containment zone and uh, get that bird and uh, what's happened to that bird were you able to release it back is it still in a rescue center no it died it died okay that's a sad died. story but how many birds did you rescue in total and how many have you been able to release so uh, so it is uh, well over some hundreds some okay. uh, so uh, well one. over hundreds between your teams uh, and i must say i have to say that you were quite well organized that you distribute those pamphlets well in advance so that people knew where to call because a lot of times rescue calls uh, res you know you see injured animals or birds but you don't know where to call so before i wind up the conversation for today very quickly all three of you your wishes for this world environment day any one thing that you would wish for shelendra i'm going to start with you any one major wish if you know a policy maker or a, or somebody was listening to you right now what would you suggest to them so i would suggest everyone that means you know the rivers and wetlands are very very important so everyone should also keep thinking whenever you are thinking about the terrestrial animals so always think about the animals those who are in the rivers and wetlands yes okay think of li rivers as living beings as well which have living yes. beings in them and the water or the water yeah. Yes. Okay, fair enough. Purnima, uh, I'd like to come to you. If you could unmute yourself, please, and uh, share with us uh, what is your wish for this World Environment Day. If you could speak to a politician or a policymaker, what would you say to them? Yeah. Thank you, Bahar. I request everyone to be very positive and innovative, and please uh, help the biodiversity in unprotected area because in protected area, you know, it, they get government protection and something as should. But please help the biodiversity, enormous biodiversity in the unprotected area, rural area. So we have to do something, some policy for that too. That is my message for. That's a great message. That's a great mes message. So Vijayoti, can I come to you now? What What is your what what is the one thing you would say maybe if mamta banerjee is watching our show is there anything you would say to her <laughs> yes uh, my uh, message to all of uh, all of you out there is to protect our uh, uh, wetland wetland is often treated as wasteland all over india so but that wetland is one of the important repository of all the uh, living organisms biodiversity everything so you have to protect your wetland it's not the wasteland Okay, that's fantastic. Some wonderful messaging there from three individuals who I have to say, despite all odds, went out there to do you know what's best for our wilderness and our, and the wild creatures out there. Uh, I'm going to sign off now. This is just to wish everybody a happy World Environment Day, and hopefully the world recovers and heals from all the crises that we're going through right now. Thank you, Shailendra, Purnima, and Sovajyoti for speaking to us at Earth Talk.